we're here with the legend, Junior Johnson. Of course, Junior recently was elected to the first class of inductees into the NASCAR Hall of Fame. And Junior, first of all, congratulations. Thank you. It's an honor to have that put on you and not expecting it and stuff, so I'm just elated by it. Has it sunk in yet? Well, not really, you know, that uh, people thank me for what I've done and stuff like that. And, you know, I'm a kind of person that I, uh, I didn't do it for anything other than the sport. And uh, I didn't expect nothing back. Payback like this is certainly worth what I did. Were you in Charlotte when they made the announcement or were you back home? I was almost home. Well, you were almost home. And I was listening to it on the radio. Is there any way to put into words what your reaction was? I'm not a real emotion person, but at least my wife was with me and also the man that runs the distillery that we have. And uh, both of them said they were sure there's tears come to my eyes. (laughs) Are you denying or confirming? I'm not real sure. (laughs) Junior, has there been a point in the the past couple of weeks where you've had a chance to reflect and say, I'm just a country boy from Wilkes County, North Carolina, and here I am, a NASCAR Hall of Fame? It's been a a long, long road, but uh, I've really been in some great, great people, companies and stuff. There's a presence of being in the Hall of Fame and elected to certain things and stuff that uh, I just appreciate it and I can't just tell you in words what what it means to me, really. Now, you said the night before at the Moonshiners Revenuers reunion up in Wilkes County that if you were elected to the NASCAR Hall of Fame, that it would be pretty much the highlight of your life. Is that the case? That is the case. You know, Everything that's ever happened in NASCAR racing is was uh, behind me winning the Daytona 500, but not anymore. Getting inducted into that Hall of Fame took that away. I know that you've already been asked this question also a thousand times, but how did Holland Moonshine on the roads translate over into what you did on the racetrack? It gave me so much advantage over other people that didn't know had to train and learn how to drive. When I sat down in that seat, the first race I ever ran, it was a back seat to what I'd already been through with. I had uh, did all them spinning deals and sideways and, you know, stuff like that, and it just made my job so much easier than anybody that I had seen come along and go into it. And I, never, ever did I see a guy I could take a car any deeper than I could and save it as long as I raced. Now, you ran a couple of races on the old Daytona <clears throat> Beach and Road course. I, I really didn't run but one race. Me and Gwen Staley went down there and kind of in a drove a car one time, but... Uh, In 1956, I went there for Brushy Mountain Motors over in Taylorville to uh, win that race, and I think I would have won it if I, you know, hadn't, the track hadn't got so rough that I just kept bluffing the track, making, you know, uh, attempt to go through the ruts and stuff the way I had drove at the early part when it was smooth, and I went in too deep and... It's sliding through them ruts, it, it dug in and turned over. Uh, but uh, I was leading the race. I, you know, I was on my way to win it. Now, uh, do you remember how much you won for that race? No, I don't. Twenty-five dollars. Well, the the fun I had was worth every dime. <laughs> because I was there, I was there against Ford Motor Company, Chevrolet, and. Keith Kafer and I, you know, Keith Kafer had a line of cars. It, it was hard to outrun them, but if you worked at it, you could beat them. You obviously won the 1960 Daytona 500. 
in that race you were credited with discovering the draft. How did, how did that come about? Well, it was an accident on my part, and uh, it uh, was something that I didn't know what I'd done. I knew I had something that nobody else had, but I didn't know what it was. And Cotton Owens came by, and I was out on the racetrack. Ray Fox was working on the car. He built a car for the track there, the dog track there, and he had two weeks to build a car and have it at the racetrack. And you can imagine how you know how much of a race car it really was. It's almost a street car. But that wasn't the worst part. I it. it had a what a 409 engine in it, and that was really a truck engine. It wasn't a, a race engine. It was for pulling heavy loads, not running <laughs> fast. So <laughs> I was there at a di- pretty big disadvantage. But I anyway, when Cotton came by, I ducked in behind him. Just you know, I wanted to race with him. And unbeknownst to me, all of a sudden, going down the back stretch, I could run all over him half throttle. And I said, that, you know, I think, and you know, I really thought Ray had got the car fixed. We was, I don't know, 20 mile an hour slow. I went back in and Ray, he said, well, we, we've got it running now and all. And, and I didn't say anything because we, you know, it did run fast. And I told him, I says, Ray, put me on a brand new set of tires and let me go back out and see how much faster it'd run my brand new tires on it. Well, I went out and I run three laps before here come Jack Smith in one of them Pontiacs, and he was the fastest Pontiac of the whole bunch. Well, I run along by the flag stand, I picked him up, and about down at the end of the, the back stretch, I could have passed him. I was all over him going in the turn. So I run him through that turn down in the front stretch and back down the back stretch again, and I pulled off and went in the pits and didn't say anything to anybody, nothing about it. I said, it's just, I almost came home. I almost didn't stay down there because the car was so slow. And I said, well, if I stay and I can do this all day long, you know, I might come out of here with a pretty good finish. So I just kind of shut up about the car <laughs> and went on with my business. And I knew what I was going to do that when that race started. I was going to, uh, you know, go to the front through using the draft of the people that was out there. And it wasn't long I was up there. Uh, the first four or five cars, I, was, I stayed in it a lot. But when they'd go to the pits, I just had to wait till one of them come out, you know. Then I could go back again like I was uh, doing, you know, while they was going from one pit stop to another pit stop. Now, was there one car in particular that you followed that day, or was it pretty much just pick and choose? Pick and choose, because the Pontiacs would get away from me every once in a while, and I couldn't ever get to them unless they come around again. I'd have to pick up some of the slower cars, but... The slower cars, when you get to them, they'd speed up and you'd speed up. So it was a a pretty good contest of being able to say that uh, you could uh, draft on a slow car and almost run with a fast car by itself. When did you know you had the race won? When Bobby uh, Johns spun out. I knew I had it won then because his back glass flew out and... The wind went in the car and sucked it up off the ground in the back, and it turned around and around down through the grass it went. And I knew if uh, the wind was that big a hazard on his back end, he couldn't run anyway. And Jack Smith, what had happened to him to get to me was that Jack had come out and picked him up and drug him around there because... He just burned a front wheel burn out, and they fixed that when the Pontiac people found out what was going on about 20, 30 laps to go. And Bobby was second to me because I'd been drafting all day, and he's running by himself, so he was, you know, not well ahead of me. I thought, well, if some of them new Pontiacs don't come back out, I've got the thing win, and 
they f figured out what I was doing, and they fixed that hub for Jack Smith and sent him out and drug Bobby Johns up through there. And they was in front of me whenever uh, his back glass blew out. Other than that win, what was your most memorable race as a driver? I, I don't know that I had a special. It compared to winning the Daytona 500 because of the way I won it and the disadvantage I had when I went into it. I don't know how what you would call it. It's yeah. just absolutely miracle that you know I was able to win that race. But uh, I won some great races. Uh, you know, uh, Charlotte and Atlanta and races like that. You won one of them things back in them days. You was a you know you was a horsepower type person. You know, and if I didn't have car trouble or blow a tire i won a lot of them and i lost more than i won nascar's 50th anniversary sports illustrated named you the greatest driver in nascar history what was your reaction to that well you know I, they had a lot of great race drivers curtis turner buck baker and, and different ones like that came along through the sport but I don't know if I was the greatest race driver in racing, but I know I could outrun anybody that come on that racetrack. That being said, in 1965, you won, I think, 12, 13 races? Yes. And you decided to step out of the car. You you decided to retire in 66. In 66, you ran, I think, six or seven races, but pretty much your your driving career was over. What was the reasoning behind that? It's kind of hard for me to say, stand here and say, well, racing wasn't my whole life. Racing was not a determinator of me going and race every race. I, I, you know, I could run and leave it either one. It didn't make yeah. any difference to me because... I knew that I was the most trained, you know, physical person to drive one of them cars through my bootlegging days yeah. of anybody out there. And it did, it wasn't exciting to outrun any one of them, but the Daytona 500 was. And, I, you know, I, I really enjoyed winning the other races. But I don't think racing put me in the category with the guys that didn't have the driving style or did not have as much experience as I had to go on the racetrack with. It was just not a thing. Or Am I, am I going to finish second today or uh, whatever? If that car run, I knew I was going to win that race. And most of them I did win.